Good evening, everyone watching at home. Thank you for coming to our special board meeting tonight. Today is December 7th, 2021. It is seven o'clock and we are about to open this meeting. And I'm going to go ahead and call this special board meeting um, open and, and uh, special board meeting of the Susan Unified School District to order. I want to go ahead and start with our mission. The Azusa Unified School District equips every student with the knowledge and skills for college and career readiness to fulfill their purpose and positively impact society. Regular agenda items will begin at seven. The Board of Education encourages public input. When the public wishes to address the Board of Education on the agenda item, they may fill out a blue card. And since we have no one here today, if you are on in Zoom, please raise your hand. The Board of Education will, will take the blue cards, but we don't have any today. But we'll go ahead and uh, give the speakers a chance on Zoom to go ahead and address the board tonight. Board members are not permitted to respond to public comment. A member of the staff will contact you if information is needed. Thank you for your participation. Individual speakers may be allowed up to three minutes to address the Board of Education. Translation services are available to the public. Thank you so much for your cooperation. We'll go ahead and start with the flag salute. If everybody can please rise. We'll move on to item 1.3, roll call. We'll go ahead and start with board member Cruz Gonzalez. Present. Board member Sabrina Bo. Here. And board member Greer. Here. We have board member Rodriguez Pena. Here. And I, board member Arianas, is here. There's five of us. Thank you for that. Next. We're moving on to 2.1, approval of the agenda. Can I please get a motion to approve 2.1? Make a motion to approve 2.1. So we have a first by board member Rodriguez Pena. We have a second by board member Greer. Let's go ahead and cast our vote. I was just informed that we can go ahead and do a hand of vote. Go to that. If I can please have um, you guys show your faces to go ahead and do this hand vote. If I have uh, Shanelene Cruz Gonzalez. Yes. We have a uh, Sabrina Bow. Board member Sabrina Bow. Thank you. Uh, board member Adrian Greer. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes. And I myself, yes. It is 5 0. We'll move on to item 3.1, which is public comment on agenda or non agenda items. Liga, do we have anyone from Zoom that would like to speak tonight? Uh, we do. We have Amber Fish. Miss Fish, you may unmute your mic. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I first I want to say thank you for your time this evening um, on these special reorganization meetings. Uh, I know this has been a lot of work and a lot of. Um, challenges have come from it. Uh, I, I'm reaching out today because in preparation for your meeting tonight, uh, I was able to take a moment to look over uh, the slides that will be presented. And I noticed that Longfellow seems to be on the chopping block on those slides. And I, I was taken aback a bit because as a part of the reorganization committee, we were told not to look at Longfellow, that it wasn't something we were going to be 
worried about and had, as a parent, I would have, if we would have known that it was going to be a possibility for closure, I feel like we would have taken a few more steps to really look at that as a possibility um, during the committee. Longfellow offers such great programs for our young students, um, special education programs. They have the dual immersion. It's a safe little space for preschool students. And I just feel like it's really important to our community that it stays open. Um, I also have heard from some board members, there's a desire to have uh, day long day, uh, day long preschools. And Longfellow offers the perfect location for that because it's a little location. You could, you could possibly leave it open longer um, to have the full day daycare. Uh, Hodge is a block away. And I know many of the parents drop off their littles at Longfellow and then walk their children over to Hodge. Um, I saw that Hodge is being considered a preschool through fifth grade. Um, we, I feel like maybe if we could look at Hodge as keeping it as a TK through five and keeping maybe Longfellow is like our extension preschool, that that would be a very viable option for the district and very viable for our community. A lot of people choose to send their children to uh, Longfellow, even though we do have um, several preschools in the community uh, at each location. And I feel like for Hodge, incurring those extra funds to, to upgrade our facilities to have a place for preschools just seems like a little bit of a waste of resources when when the perfect little preschool is right down the street. Um, I know that they have to be completely separated from all others, so there have to be fences built in. They need their own little toilets. Uh, it just personally feels like unnecessary expenses um, when we're looking at consolidating. So thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Ms. Fish. Next, we have Ms. Louisa. You can unmute your mic. Hello, thank you. Good evening, esteemed board, superintendent, and cabinet. I hope you're all doing well. Upon overviewing tonight's agenda, I saw the newest examples for reorganization to be presented tonight. I noted on all the examples, one of the schools to close is Longfellow. I understand that these might be examples and specifics of schools may not be a factor at the moment, um, but I still wanted to speak tonight. I also want to be transparent that I have a child attending now at Longfellow in the dual immersion program. However, she is leaving next year. The outcome of this decision does not impact my family. I'm speaking from a place considering the district and future families. I would like to ask the board to consider removing Longfellow completely from consideration of removal and the current conversation of reorganizing. My reasons are the following. Firstly, the rationale of reorganization as stated on today's agenda is, quote, Azusa Unified School District has been working on school reorganization as a means to improve and maximize programs and facilities. The Board of Education has received recommendations from the school reorganization team and will discuss and decide next steps. If this is true, at the start of the reorganization conversations with the reorganization team, it was stated that Longfellow was not included in this and was not to be considered at all. Therefore, all of the feedback, surveys, et cetera, from community did not consider the school and is not part of any of the recommendations or community discussions. Also, if this is true, and reorganization is a, a means to improve and maximize programs, Longfellow is a school with a multitude of successful programs with AUSD's early education, special education program, and early dual immersion program. Secondly, considering LCAP goal number one of engaging relevant, rigorous 21st century learning environments, positive, safe, and supportive school climates, Longfellow is meeting this LCAP goal through its consistent success, leadership, innovation, teacher collaborations, and positive school climate. Just as developmentally high school and middle schools need their own spaces, the same is true for early education. Finally, closing Longfellow would mean closing one of the greater contributing schools to drawing more students to our district and would be one of the least use of vacant building purposes with the lack of parking and size of facilities. I invite the board to at a later time consider expanding and supporting Longfellow instead and becoming a full day preschool to draw even more students to our district as we lose many families who need full day and go to other districts and fall into the K-12 education system because of this. Longfellow would serve as an excellent pilot to a full day preschool program in our district. To end and state clearly my request to the board, please close conversation on Longfellow and reorganizing and instead consider if Longfellow is so successful, how can we in fact replicate its successes at a different location and grow into a, grow in the future to a full day pre preschool program. Thank you for your time, good evening.
Lika, do we have anybody else on Zoom raising their hand? We have no other hands raised. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to general functions in our agenda, 4.1 school reorganization. Thank you, board president. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, what I want to do is I want to walk um, uh, the Board of Education <clears throat> through um, some models um, that uh, we put together uh, based on uh, what we thought, what some of the things that we thought we heard uh, in discussion uh, with the Board of Education. Uh, these are um, just models to consider as we are talking about uh, the elementary school side of these models. Uh, so we're really looking at the left-hand side uh, of these models. Uh, all three of these uh, samples uh, have been named. And so I'm just gonna share them in alphabetical order, not in any priority order or anything, anything like that. And then I'll explain how they were created um, and then turn it back over to the Board of Education for further discussion. Uh, so the first model uh, is called uh, the largest capacity model. This model takes uh, only into account our largest capacity schools. This does not take into account where they are located. It does not take into account uh, what they're close to or not close to. This is strictly looking at what are our largest sites. And those would be the ones that uh, remain open. So here on the left-hand side in this model, you'll see that Hodge, Magnolia, Murray, Paramount, and Valleydale, uh, which are the largest uh, of our uh, school sites, uh, would be the school sites that remain open in this particular uh, example. What we did uh, in addition to this graphic that we've seen many iterations of, we have also uh, placed it on a map um, just to give a different view. So here you'll see this model represented uh, on a map. And so uh, you might say, or you might um, observe that by doing this model, there are four schools south of the 210 and only one school north of the 210, right? If this is, if this was, if this was, if we were just going to base it on the largest schools, um, then as a, as a result of that, um, this is what this is what happened. Not saying this is good or bad, just pointing it out as a as a matter of as a matter of fact. Um, we additionally uh, heard. Uh, the desire to see, uh, we, we have been uh, keeping our ears to the ground that um, we, we wish this to go uh, faster uh, rather than slower. And so, again, this is not something that is um, a finished product in, in no way, shape, or form, uh, but this is an idea of how this might be implemented uh, over the course of two years. Uh, you will notice that there are no um, actual years um, labeled here, uh, and that is by design. So year one uh, may be 22-23, um, and year two could be 23-24. Um, it could be split where the secondary goes and then the elementary goes or vice versa. But this is, this is how uh, it, it possibly can happen uh, over a two-year span. In essence, what happens at the elementary level is the schools uh, that will eventually uh, close uh, would take no new enrollment in year one. And then in year two, they would be completely shut down. Uh, in, in essence, that's what, that's, what this, that's what this does. 
At the secondary level, uh, in essence, what this does is uh, the Azusa High School campus um, would take on all ninth graders. So Gladstone High School would not take on any new enrollment either. And then the following year, it would be it would be closed and shut down. Um, at the middle school level, um, we uh, at the board level there there was a uh, an idea, a suggestion, if you will, uh, that Foothill Middle School uh, can become part of the Azusa High School campus. Um, and we think that there is great benefit uh, to that. And so in year one, we can either uh, close uh, Foothill Middle School down and leave Center and Slauson open, uh, or because it's such a small school, uh, for year one, maybe we can even uh, coexist uh, for uh, for a year before it's uh, before it shuts down. So this is just again uh, an idea of how this possibly can happen uh, over two years. Um, but but the the emphasis or, or the majority of the conversation really is about about this model or this sample model uh, up here. I just kind of want to give you how this the, how this flows and the and the three different uh, attachments that are here. Uh, so again, this is the largest capacity. So then our second model is titled uh, Northwest Northeast. Can I just ask the question? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So um, you mentioned about the high schools, how the ninth graders will not um, register. They would register at the Azusa High School campus. Correct. Right. Right. But would that sustain for the elementary, right? For the pre-K? PK and K. PK would go into the schools that, um, that we're going to be transferring the students to. That is correct, In, including kinder. Including kinder. Oh, okay. Yes. Kinder, oh, yeah. It's just one through six. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So this, this second um, model, uh, to kind of consider or think about. Again, this one's called Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast. Uh, unlike the first model, here we're not looking at just the size of our buildings, our school sites, but we're actually looking at location uh, as well. Um, so here in this model, uh, Dalton, Hodge, Murray, Paramount, and Valleydale uh, are the school sites uh, that would remain uh, open. And again, if you look at the map, in this in this particular model, we did want to make sure that in in the four that there was a school in all four uh, quadrants. Uh, you will notice uh, just uh, to show that in the quadrant one or the north um, northwest or Victor Hodges, that's the only school in that quadrant. Um, in the northeast side, you do have Dalton, Lee, and Powell. Uh, so I will explain why um, why we chose uh, Dalton for this model. Again, that doesn't mean that the, that the way we're thinking is correct, but we can we can explain why. Um, of the three schools, Powell is the smallest school of those three schools, and so so then that one. Uh, was not considered. If you look at Lee and Dalton, Lee is actually a larger school than Dalton. But Lee is further behind in terms of modernization compared uh, to Dalton. And so it, this, this north west corner can easily be Dalton or Lee uh, or Powell if, if that was the wishes of the board. Uh, but in terms of Lee, there is that consideration or that factor that um, in terms of modernization, uh, there would be uh, more investment than, than would at Dalton because they're ahead in terms of the schedule. They're further along uh, than Lee. And that's why uh, Dalton was chosen in that quadrant. In the southwest con uh, quadrant, uh, there is only uh, Murray, so that makes it like Hodge. That's easy. And then in the south 
East Quadrant, there are three schools. Uh, those are Paramount, Valleydale, uh, and Allington. And on this one, uh, it was uh, just because of size. So Valleydale and Paramount are the larger uh, schools, and that's why uh, those schools were chosen for this particular uh, model. Again, these are not set in stone. These are just examples for the board to, to consider and, and, and think about. The third model that we created, uh, we named uh, proximity. Um, in this model, uh, you see that Dalton, Hodge, Magnolia, Murray, Paramount, and Valleydale are the schools that remain open. Uh, you will notice that this model, unlike the first two, uh, this model um, does have one more school open compared to the first two models. So this one has six schools open. The first two models only had five schools open. So let me explain how, how we came about uh, this particular model and this thinking. So for this one, um, what we tried to do is we tried to look at uh, schools that were close in proximity uh, and had a potential for closing because they were either um, smaller in size or uh, further along in modernization. So the first schools that we paired together were Dalton and Lee, uh, again, because of how close they are. Uh, they're both on the west side of Azusa and they're both in the north side. Uh, of the 210. Uh, again, very much like the Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast. Uh, here, even though Lee is larger and we typically would have chosen the larger school, here uh, we went with Dalton because how far Lee is in terms of modernization. So we took those two schools and we said, which one, which, which one would we keep open? Dalton. Then we paired up Powell and Magnolia. Again, very close in proximity to each other. That one was purely because of size. Magnolia is a larger campus uh, compared to Powell. Uh, Paramount and Murray, we did not touch. Uh, those are large campuses um, with quite a bit of uh, students there already. So we looked at Valleydale and Ellington as our next pair. Um, and so again, looking at Valleydale and Ellington uh, in terms of schools that are close in proximity, um, Valleydale is a larger campus with more capacity, and that is why we chose uh, Valleydale uh, compared uh, to, to Ellington. Um, so, so really, again, the 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 these are the these are three. Um, uh, samples, if you will, uh, uh, models uh, for the board uh, to consider, discuss. Hey, maybe we like this model, but let's swap these schools. All right, any of that obviously is is uh, um, is agreeable, and we can definitely do. We just wanted to give the board something to to chew on and to have, uh, and it was a request of the board that we came with with some samples of what this might look like. And so um, I turn it back over to uh, board president. Thank you, Mr. Arthur Ortega for presenting these. As we have had some time to take a look at this, and now that you've explained, I, I think it's appropriate for us to be able to go ahead and open this up for questions, uh, comments from the board. We'll go ahead and start with board member Rodriguez Pena. Okay, so as I'm looking at the three models, I see that. Um, I just like the idea of the model three for the purpose of that. If we're looking at the students and um, how the closest school to them would be Magnolia. If Magnolia was not there, then uh, I'm assuming they would go to um, Murray and that's a, a distance. And, and I'm thinking about distance. That, and that's the same thing I feel about the students from Lee. Um, then they go to Dalton. I don't want an overcrowded school either. You know, we need to ha have room for growth. So 
I like the way this map looks and the proximity of, we'll say, Ellington um, to Valleydale. I'm sorry, okay. intro. Did you say you, you do like Model I do 3? Like. I, I, I'm just, and just for clarification, me. it's Model 3 proximity, the one that's on the board right now. Yes? M Model 3 proximity. That's yeah, the one I'm okay. talking about. Yeah. And because, and then, and then I, I feel again that, you know, we have some schools in the north side and the south side. They're not all focusing on one um, particular area. So it's, it's like, and it's just unified. It's like, it's, North, East, South, West, and I also like that idea too. Thank you. You did a really good job on um, knowing what we kind of were looking looking at. Thank you. We have board member Bo. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of. Uh, questions to ask regarding the calculations of capacity and also in terms of um, any build out needed to um, meet future needs. Mr. Ortega, for, I know when we started this discussion, we talked about having carve out spaces at elementary sites. And I think we had previously identified four spaces, library, innovation lab, SPED, and a parent room, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, subsequent to um, meetings, uh, we have uh, gone back, uh, walked the campuses um, one more time. We have the capacity that was given to us. Uh, what's the name of the company, Natasha? Decision Insight. Decision Insight, who, who uh, walked the campuses, mapped them out. Um, and so right now, uh, these school sites capacities actually have a carve out of six classrooms. Six right. classrooms. Um, and so what Decision Insight uh, was doing was basically already carving out uh, the library and the computer lab. And so we went and carved out four additional rooms. And so right now these capacities include a carve out of six quote unquote rooms that technically could be used as classrooms, but we have carved them out uh, to not be used as classrooms for things like innovation lab, parent center, um, you know, SPED services and those kinds of things. That's a long way to answer your question. Pretty close to yes. Sure. Well, I, I would like to add to that mix then. And, and so I'm glad to hear that we're, we're, we're reserving space, um, not reserving space at each of the elementaries. Um, can you tell me if there's been any thought given to ensuring that each elementary school has a carve out space for a VAPA classroom or a VAPA instructional space? Yeah, um, definitely heard that. And so we do have uh, services currently uh, at the elementary school. Uh, for uh, for band and and, and vocal, um, and yes, uh, at some sites uh, sometimes that becomes a pressure point, and so we're looking at um, the cafetorium or you know the stage on there. Um, so yeah, as we look to envision those six rooms, I mean that's definitely uh, a possibility, and that has come up in our conversation. Okay, I think it's critically important that when we I know that we have already have flex spaces like a cafetorium or a multi-purpose room. And I think as we're creating these, um, you know, the, the, the schools that we vision into taking us into the future, that if we're saying that VAPA, you know, arts and language are important, um, I would hope that we can create those dedicated spaces rather than depending on the availability of flex spaces to serve um, visual and performing arts. Yeah, and those spaces can also be multi-use uh, as well. Um, but but yes, we, we definitely hear that. Okay. Um, I, I have several questions, but I'll just ask one for this round. And I know we're going to keep going. Uh, um, yes. Want me to share your, want me to answer your second question? Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, 
as we have as we have uh, stated uh, in the past, uh, facilities, uh, all of our facilities, uh, no matter what schools remain or which have been modernized or not modernized, uh, we feel that there's still uh, investment. And so, you know, we're looking forward to uh, thinking about the bond and how that how that helps. Uh, one of the things uh, right off the bat uh, that we envision um, is going to be needed is adequate parking uh, and possible cutouts uh, for uh, kind of like uh, drop off and pick up um, because uh, that is something that uh, all of our schools uh, struggle with. And so kind of envisioning that uh, adequate parking and, and how we can envision cutouts uh, to the campus uh, for the community to be able to uh, drop off and pick up their students uh, in a, in a, in a better way uh, than we, than we currently have. And my, my follow on question again, and this will be my last for this round is that have you also applied that thinking to um, renovation of campuses to include preschool spaces using bond money? Yeah, we're very fortunate uh, that right now um, only Hodge and Ellington uh, do not have uh, preschool uh, spaces. Uh, but yes, as we as we uh, double back and loop back on all of her facilities, uh, can use um, investments uh, that include uh, the preschool space as well. Thank you so much. Board member Bo, if you have other questions, um, feel free to, to ask them. I'm happy to, to uh, go around. I wanted to give you that courtesy. We have, um, we don't have any hands raised um, and I'll step in. Um, I, I have a, a concern. One of the things that we were talking about at our last meeting was, um, you know, the, the possibility of, of, cause we have not decided on this. It was just a topic of conversation. And that was to, to keep the names of Azusa High School and Gladstone High School. And I, I have a concern. I have been bombarded with emails, texts, phone calls, not just from parents or community members, but from students. I met with a group of students. And they're concerned, as we are seeing right now in both um, in the three um, presentations that are presented to us now, we would like to go ahead and get this as soon as possible and make this transition. The concern that these students have are that they're going to be halfway through their, you know, middle of their high school experience. Asking them to turn around and completely immerse themselves into a school on the other side. So I asked these students, what do you think would be a possible solution? And their response was branding. We would feel more comfortable going into the Azusa campus if it was rebranded. I think it is important that, yes, the conversation was about there, there's a you know, lifelong residence that would like to go ahead and keep this. I, I, I've been here my, you know, over 40 years. My sisters went to Azusa High. I actually called them as well. And I said, hey, what do you think about this? And they said, you know what? We've already, we've already had our turn. We've already been there. What matters are the students right now. How they feel. It's their turn. So being able to have these conversations with these group of students not only my family members that have gone to Azusa, I went to Gladstone. I, I think it would be in our best interest to go ahead and rebrand and invest 
in the rebranding. There was a word that there was a um, talk about it costing $5 million. So, could, uh, Ms. Latasha Jamal, could you please clear that up? And oh, and by the way, th there was another rumor that it was going to be 10 because we were going to do a middle school and a high school. And that number is correct. So, when we were originally considering the 712 model to rebrand and to add modulars, that's where the $10 million came from. But just for clarification, rebranding was not $10 million. Correct. It was $10 million to do model four, which included new classrooms, like included the gym floors, included a whole bunch of stuff that had nothing to do with quote unquote branding. So, so can I just come in on this one then? Um, I was going to ask that question, but you just started. Um, so what is the exact cost? I mean, we heard 10 and we heard five. And then now, you know, um, whatever the cost is going to be, um, I feel the same way because I have been getting phone calls and, and people, I spoke to students and, and, and pretty much the answer is, is, you know, you know, you know, one of my colleagues mentioned that it was only fair for the um, students or the alums from Azusa High to keep the name and what have you. Well, guess what? We forgot about the gladiators. I mean, how do we feel about them? I mean, fair is fair. We have to look at both sides and not just only one. I had spoke to students and I'll just put some words out that they told me, you know, so how do you feel about it? Number one, awkward. Just walk into a school that they know that they've been, you know, rivals. It's been that way. And it's that and it's not a secret. You know, number two, they feel out of place. They're feeling you're moving us, but now we have to go into another. Now you're forcing us to have to um, use that same name. It was a high school. And I, I, I feel that, you know, we're gonna, if we're going to reorganize and we're going to start new, we should start new with a new name, with, with a fresh name where everyone's going to feel. And even if we had a contest in the community or involve the community to make that change, it's, it, this is historical. And they'll feel, you know, we made that name. It's not like it's the same school, the same name, but you're forcing the rivals to go into this school. So we have to think about kids from the cells, kids from the cells, alums, what have you. We're going to think of everyone, not just one, you know. And, and I wasn't done with some of the things, you know, they said, you know, awkward. They feel out of place. They say it's not fair. The word rival, scared, you know. And um, I, I guess you're moving us, but now you're. Well, we're board members, so they're thinking that because we're the decision makers that we are forcing them to go there, but we're also forcing them to go there with the with the name of the Zusa High, and that's true. I mean, they're like, well, we don't want to go there, you know. And, and, and it's history. That's how it's been. It's not a secret. So I think to be fair with everyone, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I know we didn't get done with the cost, but you know, there's a way. Whatever. Um, you know, can we get grants for it? Can we get a lower cost? Can we look at other bids? Because that was my big thing at the beginning saying, okay, well, we'll keep it because, of course, I'm not going to spend $5,000, $5 million, uh, you know, it, for myself um, as a board member, you know, uh, uh, fiscally solvent, that's not it. But I hear it's even less than that. But can we get new bids? You know, there's something else we can do. I don't know, fundraise. I, I'm not sure. But is there something we can do so we can make it happen so we can, everyone can feel there and want to go there? And it's, it's going to be brand new to everybody. Yes, ma'am. And yeah, so there's, thank all, you. Yes, I'm sorry. There's always options. And just to um, clarify, the number that we presented, um, again, the 10 million was for model four, and that was the total cost to implement model four. Right. Um, the next, we identified the 1.8 million, which was the amount that we projected to. Um, redo or reimagine the one high school campus. Now in that included remodeling. And so of the $1.8 million, that was new branding was 235,000. The gym floor, and these are all options. The gym floor was 347,000. New turf overlay was 110,000. Athletic equipment was projected at 500,000. Modernizing the kitchen, increasing it by 500 square feet, was $200,000 and upgrading the locker room was $500,000. Now, these are all options. These are not all things we have to do. 
to rebrand, we can pick and choose. We could always understand, but we also do have to understand cost of inflation, but these are the current recommended prices at this time for these items. But there's other things that we could think of, but these are just the key things that we considered at the time. But, but even then we can, uh, again, just to be super clear, we can tease out some of those things have nothing to do with rebranding, right? Redoing the kitchen, we feel like, hey, we're going we're gonna to have a brand new high school. We need to redo the kitchen. But that has nothing to do with branding. But there's a price tag that adds to the one point, what was it? 1. 1. 1. 1.8 million. 1.8, right? So, so the kitchen is not really part of rebranding, right? So you start taking those things out, you're really looking anywhere between 850,000 to, you know, 1.1 million, you know, somewhere around that, that range that would go into quote unquote, re just rebranding purposes. I just think this so, uh, and we should really, I mean, concentrate on the branding because that's, that's what the main big thing is about of, of the name change is the branding, you know, not the kitchen and not the floor or what have you, but it really has to do with the branding of the name of the school. The, um, um, what do you call it? Um, that is, Mascot, I'm sorry. But yeah, the, the mascot. You know, this is kind of what we're talking about. Um, on top of, of course, all the other things. But um, I, I think for us to make the right decision, we need we should have a um, right cost or how else we can bid. I mean, who knows? Someone may want to give us a deal. I mean, we don't. We, we have not looked into that. I don't know. But um, if we have not, may, maybe we could, you know. I'm sorry. You had said that there's grants out there, Mr. Wall. I did not use the word grant. Um, I just said there's always options to explore. I just said, <laughs> we should, I just said we should, maybe we should look at grants or, or something that would help us, you know. Yeah. You know I, I don't know. Yeah. And so, um, um, Ms., uh, board member um, Yolanda Pena, um, if the desire is for me to provide you exact amount or current project numbers, I would at least like to know exactly what we would like to rebrand and then I can dive into those. So is it just Thank the field? I really is appreciate it, that. If you give me that, I have no problem with getting That's that information yes. for you. But there are some things that that you would have to do to rebrand. And there's just no way around it, right? You cannot change the name of a school and leave your marquee to still say Azusa High School, right? So you'd have to, you'd have to rebrand the marquee. You'd have to rebrand re the football field. You'd have to rebrand all of the painting that currently has. So we're talking about inside the, the gymnasium um, on some, some outer uh, uh, places of, of the campus. And then probably, so those are, you know, some big costs. And then your other big costs uh, are going to be your extracurricular activities like sports, uh, marching band, right? Cheer, like those kinds of things. Uh, those would be big costs because we're talking about uniforms uh, for those uh, particular things. That's, a, that's another, another big cost. You mean they would get brand new uniforms? Correct. Yeah, they can have them with the same name. And then some, again, some further ones, again, that just off the top of our head that we know for sure, right? Um, and these are now lesser, but still, nonetheless, right? Anything uh, that includes the logo currently, business cards, letterhead, right? You know, those kinds of things. But again, those become lesser. But your, your big ones are the, the kind of the ones that, that, that I, that I uh, spoke about. And, and those big ones right now, without going out and saying, can you give me a quote for this or whatever? Um, we are projecting somewhere between eight to $1 million. 800,000 to $1 million for, for, for those things. Great, thank you. I see that we have board member Greer raising his hand. Can you unmute? Yeah, so, so I have actually a couple, a couple areas with, with uh, questions. So one, uh, we were talking about elementary schools and, and some of the different models that were presented to us one and then the other one is the high school so in regards to the uh elementary schools looking at the model that that shows schools in different quadrants i think for the most part from my perspective makes the most sense there is however one piece that i want to point out that from my perspective does seem to be somewhat missing uh yeah if we look Sorry, at the map there. board member Curry, which model did you say the, the quadrants, the north, the, the northwest, northeast, just the one with the four quadrants. Uh, yeah, um, is this the correct one? This is the this is the northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. 
And, and if I can point out the only difference between this one and proximity, which is the third model, is the addition of Magnolia. That's the only difference between this model that we're looking at right now on the screen and the proximity model that board member Rodriguez Pena spoke about. The only difference between these two is, is Magnolia. I'm, I'm mistaken then. I was looking at the proximity model. Yes. Okay, so the same one board member Rodriguez Pena talked about. Yeah, so so this one this one does make sense to me. There does seem to be a, that that chunk there in the you know in the north eastern side that that does seem to be you know kind of kind of glaringly missing a, a, a school there. And, and as I um, I'd say no, northeast, so in that area, yeah. And so it makes a lot of sense looking at Lee and the conversation with what it has not been modernized. I get that. That makes that makes sense. I, are there are there other options to look at within this space? One of the things that was brought up uh, last time around was Foothill Middle School being used as uh, kind of overflow or somehow in connection with um, Azusa High School. So I, I, I'd love to hear someone speak into the viability of Foothill Middle School being able to receive some of those uh, surrounding campuses to, to allow for there to be a campus in that area, in, in that space where it does seem, leave where, where it's located geographically, Lee makes sense, but due to the, the, the cost, I get that uh, associated with uh, modernization. So, so I'd, I'd just love to hear some, some conversation on the, the, the viability of Foothill Middle School as a, as a space. And then the other... Uh, I'll, 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 I'll stop there. I, ha I have questions with uh, high school and, and junior high models, but I'll, I'll stop there for now. Sure. I'll, I'll begin that, that conversation. Uh, so yes, uh, board member Greer, to your point, uh, even during the school reorganization team process, uh, there was the consideration that Foothill would become like a mega elementary that, and that would shut down Dalton, Lee, and Powell and that all three of those schools would go there. So Dalton would be shut down, Lee would be shut down, and Powell would be shut down. That, that was one of the ideas that, that, was, uh, that, that was brought up. Um, as we stated previously, uh, we really, uh, again, this can go either way, but we really do like the idea of Foothill Middle School uh, becoming part of uh, the Azusa High School uh, campus uh, for several reasons. Um, Number one, uh, the Azusa High School campus, uh, unlike the Gladstone High School campus, uh, does not have a proper theater. Uh, the theater that exists at Azusa High School um, is not up to code, it's not in compliance, and it is, it is extremely, extremely small. Uh, so if we were to invest in that particular theater, even if we were to invest in it, the space is very, very small and very limited, so it wouldn't be a proper theater. If Foothill Middle School was the middle school, uh, I'm sorry, was part of Azusa High School, Foothill Middle School has a cafetorium. That cafetorium has a stage and has lighting uh, already in it. And so maybe we can imagine that, that, that space uh, becoming a proper theater um, that cafetorium also has uh, a kitchen. And so when we think about like backstage, dressing rooms, prop area, um, it just seems like a, like, a, like a nice fit. But let's abandon that idea for a quick second. Again, we do like the idea of, of having that part of Azusa High School for, for various reasons. That was just one. Uh, but if it was to become a, a, an elementary school, which, which it can, uh, we also have to consider the investment that needs to go into Foothill Middle School uh, to make it uh, an, an elementary school. Um, Foothill Middle School, uh, we'd have to invest in kindergarten. Um, so we'd have to make sure and ensure uh, that we have uh, spaces. Uh, restrooms uh, would have to be uh, redone. Um, if we are looking at uh, preschool, um, that would also have to be uh, reimagined. We'd have to actually build out restrooms into uh, classrooms. Uh, the way that we have been able to build out preschools at our elementary schools, um, I'm not saying with zero investment, but with, with minimal investment, is because we do have classrooms already 
that already include restrooms in the classrooms. Um, and so th there would have to be um, some, some investment, again, not impossible, uh, some investment though into Foothill um, as we consider making it uh, an elementary school. Uh, there would be there would be some some investment uh, in 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 that respect. Um, I do not know if that investment would equal uh, or be less or would surpass like the investment that would have to go into Lee just to to bring Lee up. Um, I I don't know off, off the top of my head, but just initially, those are some considerations uh, for Foothill uh, in turning into an elementary. Another another. Another one is playground. Uh, there is currently not a playground uh, at Foothill Middle School. And so, you know, we'd probably want to invest in a playground to make it equitable to the other uh, elementary schools as well. And Natasha, I don't know if I'm missing anything just obvious. Um, no, those are key. The only other item I would identify is that the capacity at Foothill is so large. Um, and so that would increase our current capacity goal because that capacity for Foothill is 1,300, um, whereas most of our elementaries are largest, it's barely a little bit over 700. So it's almost two elementary campuses in one. And again, the, the iterations that we have heard would, was that, that the, the three schools would go into that one school, uh, Dalton, Lee, and Powell or that would service that area, if you will. Um, but again, I mean, right, these are conversations. Um. And adding, adding to that, a couple thoughts. So one, I, that I hear that it would upset our, our capacity numbers with Foothill, but we could see the same thing with our high school numbers. If, we, if that were to be an add-on to Azusa High School, and if we were to factor that into capacity, it, 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 would, it would send that you know, un under, uh, you know, a, a preferred number as well, I, I imagine. Um, would it be possible to, to, to get some cost analysis if we were to look at those three schools as options? If we were to look at Dalton, if we were to look at Lee, and if we were to look at Foothill, would you be able to provide a cost analysis on what would be needed to make that school, any, each of those three schools, the school for that quadrant? Um, that that might be helpful as for us to know um, as we're considering which which school makes the most the most sense space and as well as uh, additional investment that's that's needed. Okay, can I just clarify, um, for Member Greer? So we already have Dalton listed. So are we? Um, is the, the ask that I look into the cost of either modernizing Lee or modernizing Foothill? Yeah, so here, here's what here's what I would be helpful for me, uh, okay. and, and please speak to how how feasible this is. If we were to look at that quadrant and say that it, it makes sense for there to be one school within that quadrant, that one school could be uh, Dalton, that one you know campus, that one campus could be Lee, or that one campus could be Foothill. What if it were to be Dalton? What needs to go into Dalton to 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 allow it to absorb? And what are the costs associated with that? If it were Lee, what are the things that need to go into Lee? And, and to bring these things up to mo and be modernized, what are the costs that need to go into to Lee? And same with Foothill. I understand that you can't get exact costs, but but having even some type of ballparks for these three campuses um, would, would be helpful to determine which which makes the most sense within that quadrant. Okay. Remember Greer, just uh, for Uber clarification, uh, what we would be doing uh, for Dalton, as we would be saying, here's where it is right now in its modernization. These are the things that that we were pegged to modernize it, and this is the cost. This is where Lee is at in modernization to bring it up to what we thought we were going to peg it. This is the cost. But unlike Foothill, for for Dalton and Lee, these are just not just. I don't I don't want to use that word. These are these are modernization projects. Foothill, it's modernization plus re, redoing it to actually become an elementary school. So that'll be just, I mean, just for clarification, that would be an additional like cost where there is not that cost at Lee and Dalton. 
Correct. And so, but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm seeking to, to have a handle on is what is, what is the ballpark out the door for, for Dalton? If we have Dalton with its current capacity and that's going to be the school for that quadrant, are there additional class classrooms that need to be added to that camp, campus or restrooms? Are, are, are there other things needed within Dalton or is Dalton turnkey ready to go to, to, to receive? Um, and, and so what are those costs? Are, are there modernization uh, projects not yet completed at Dalton that are still on the list? What are those, to, to the best of our ability, ballpark exhaustive costs for Dalton? Those same costs, if it were Lee, those same costs, if it were Foothill. Once we have those three, we can actually look at and look at those numbers and know what the what the real investment to make each of those uh, uh, campuses, or, or what would it, what the investment would be needed to make any one of those campuses the the identified campus for that particular quadrant. Got it. And board, board president, can I ask my second question about high school? Uh, yes, please feel free. Okay, so in, in regards to, to the high school and to branding, I'm, I'm with, I'll say I'm with everybody in that, or I'm with those who have, spoke, who, who have spoken so far, which is in an ideal world and in an ideal scenario, we would, we would have some rebranding to be able to start fresh and to, to start new. Um, when we asked questions on some of those numbers last time around, I'll say that those num the numbers that were shared last when we discussed it at the last meeting, that is, it's not the idea that turns me off. It's the numbers. It's 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 the the openness to to spend that you know that that percentage of bond dollars that we have available on the purposes of rebranding. And so, yeah, knowing knowing exactly what we're looking at, what are the what are the minimums. And but then what are those those you know, preferred things that we'd want to do for the purposes of rebranding? When we look at a kitchen expansion, that, that seems like a kitchen expansion is something that may need to happen either way. Uh, but but branding, whether we rebrand or not, those that's that's what we're that's what we're looking at and, and considering. So it would be helpful to know. And it sounded like uh, Mr. Ortega, you said eight hundred to, to one million. Um, and I I. It's my assumption that that's for just one campus. If we were to if we were to look at doing that at just the high school, which that also makes sense if that cuts it in half. If we were to benefit, if the middle school were to remain as let's say Gladstone Middle School, and if the high school were were rebranded to some some new uh, high school name, that would also cut those costs in half. I imagine. And and, and could someone speak to that? Um, the Yeah, so that, that is to, to me is what it comes down to. One, one last question. Based off the, 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 the way that you have the model rolling out, this would only technically, technically, I mean, I, I'm an alumni also, so I, I understand how it will affect Gladstone High School alumni. I, I am one. But I'm not, not speaking about alumni for here for a moment, just looking at this, the students that would actually be affected. If I'm not mistaken, if mistaken, it would only affect the current sophomores. At Gladstone High School, if so, so, so just for, for context and, and understanding, that's by, by my calculation. So, if, if someone sees it differently, please, please let me know. Um, no, I think it affects two classes. The current, I believe, it's the current freshmen and the current sophomores. Um, that it would quote unquote effect that would be moving to a different school. The current seniors, obviously they're graduating now. The current juniors, they'd be able to graduate. It's the, it's the current freshmen and sophomores. Got it, that's right. So can I ask my, my colleagues in, what is, what is your thoughts? If we were to continue to explore those costs, if we were to look at just rebranding the high school, and not rebranding the uh, the middle school campus, it, it would it would need to be rebranded because it's middle instead of high school. But but we may not need to change the name and may not need to change the mascot at, at Gladstone at a Gladstone middle school. You know, one of the things that um, that I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you know we're we're looking overall. I think the understanding that we as a board need to be realistic 
is that as you know, as I hear you, uh, board member Greer, asking for the cost of, you know, uh, being able to upgrade everything at Dalton Lee, or having uh, an elementary at Foothill Middle Schools, and I hear uh, both uh, Ms. Latasha Jamal and Arturo say there's going to be some cost. So I think regardless of of how we are trying to save in reality up front, there are going to be some costs. But what we have to look, I think, as, as a board is that, um, yes, um, you, you shared that you were an alumni, but at the same time, we have the ninth graders and 10th graders that are really concerned that we want to keep in our district. And right now, we as a board can invest for the future. We're looking to close at least five, six schools, right? The savings that will come from that. We're making a sacrifice at this point right now. And regardless of, you know, like you shared, you know, I think that that's a great idea to, to look into, but help, you know, even to look into a K, I mean, I'm going to throw this out there, K through eight at Foothill. You know, that, that, that could also be a possibility. And I, I threw that out before, you know, to, to on the dais to, to consider that if we're going to go to elementary, if there's 13, if Foothill can host 1,300 students, right? I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I know that we have spoken about that it will take some of the eighth graders. And I'm, I'm speaking more, um, you know, those eighth graders that need that nurturing, RSTC, RSP, um, we have a visually impaired, um, give them that smaller school, you know, that that's a possibility as well. But I think bottom line, as we move forward with this conversation, we need to take in consideration that this is an investment for the future of our, of our school. And when we look at it that way, you know, um, I mean, we spent $5 million in, in our, which they look great, our, um, our football fields, you know, we as a board did pass um, that and we spent $5 million, close to $5 million, knowing that we were going to go into the reconfiguration. And we made that sacrifice at, for that time being. And we had great graduations and people that graduated came up to us and said, thank you. Thank you for this football field. And this, the current alumni that we have right now and their concern, one of the things that I heard was, um, uh, board member uh, Rodriguez-Pena said, um, the awkwardness, right? We're going to lose these students. They're not going to want to go if it's not rebranded. And why not give that uplift all around in our district. That way we can all start from scratch. Again, regardless of, you know, if we look at this uh, elementary or we look, you know, making Foothill, um, the elementary, like, like you shared, um, Board Member Greer, we, we have to take into consideration that we are going to be investing for the future. If we look at it, that we're going to be, you know, spending, we can't spend this, we can't spend that. I, I'm sure that um, there are there are funds and uh, that can be allocated to go ahead and move this forward and the things that we need to um, to do um, and the possibilities that may come from this um, are are going to be very rewarding, I believe, for our district. Board Member Rodriguez Pena. Yes, so what I want to add to that is that um, I still like the idea that Woodhill um, would be part of the Azusa um, campus when we put the students there, because we did talk about overcrowding. And I know uh, Superintendent Ortega mentioned about the um, the little theater, which we, it is a very little theater. Um, and those students, if you 
those three schools, Dalton Lee and um, Paul will say, you know, put them there. It, it, it's going to take away from the other schools. Uh, the whole idea is that we're going to build capacity. We're going to have better programs because there'll be more students there. But you're taking them away. So the next year or two, we're going to close more schools because you're taking those students away and putting them in a K to A foothill. If that's your idea. Um, and then you're taking kids, the seventh and eighth graders, from the Gladstone campus at middle school, the Armega Middle School, and maybe they're going to have great programs. And then it's not the same because it's it's ele um, K to A is elementary curriculum. Those students are not going to have the same as the students in the Mega Middle School at the Grassland High School campus. So I, I'm I, I'm not really um, too down on that. I, I really still like the way we spoke about it before, where it was going to be part of this visa campaign. That's the beauty of it because it is so so close together. We can do a lot with those two campuses. Uh, board member Greer, did I? I don't know if you put your hand up again or if it was from before. I, I did put my hand back up, but I don't think uh, Board Member Cruz Rodriguez has has gotten us to speak yet. So, did you have something chilling you wanted to say? I, well, I, I did. did. Oh, I, I thought he was up talking about me. May, may I speak? I'm sorry. Yes, Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. Yeah, I just want to say I agree with what Yolanda just said about. Um, it makes sense to use the the foothill as an annex for just a high school. So I, I still want us to focus on keeping that that way. Um, although I, so I, I think it's fine to investigate the cost. I do think it makes sense to see how much it costs to to um, to to modernize Dalton. Uh, you know, I, I, we're looking at this in terms of the quadrants, but I think often people think about um, that area between foothill and the freeway really as, a, as a, a community of, well, I'll say community of interest because we're doing redistricting, but, but that really has a community identity. And so I'm wondering about, it. so I, I would be in favor in investigating what it would, you know, just understanding what it would, what it would mean to keep, to keep Lee school open. Um, but then the other thing I want to say is, I think I agree with, I think I heard Adrian saying that he didn't, he didn't want to rebrand. And I just want to say, I agree with, that's it. Okay, so I'm saying a uh, couple things. I, I didn't exactly say that I, I don't want to rebrand. Re I'll say based off of the information that we received the last time. So if we have if there's if we have new information, um, I, I that could change. But but the here, here's uh, board, board president. One of the things you talked about is investment. But let's but once the, I also want to be mindful of the fact that we have monies. We have you know some upwards of forty million dollars. 100% of those $40 million that we have allocated is going to be an investment in our, in our students, in our community, in our schools. 100% of that $40 million. It's the, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what is the best use of that $40 million, uh, uh, of that $40 million investment? We, we as, a, as a board, we can choose and we can say, it, you know, we could say it makes sense to spend $5 million on rebranding, we, we we could make that decision, or if it's you know, eight hundred thousand to to one million, what, whatever those costs are, we can we as a board can can uh, uh, we we can vote and allocate those 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 funds in that in that um, that direction. But I want to be careful not to think about this as a do we invest or do we not invest because it is all an investment. Um, with, with that being said. When we have this conversation of of rebranding, I don't. I, I want to be careful to not separate the conversation of of re, of, of should we rebrand with the feasibility of monies that that we have. So to just have a kind of a you know some kind of a soapbox kind of conversation or talk on why why we should do it with we need to recognize that if we we can, but if we spend those monies on that, then it means that we're not spending monies on something else. And so we can choose to do that. And I'm open to having that, that conversation. And so one of the questions that I have is, are we open as a board, are we open to looking at just rebranding 
the, the high school and not the middle school because that would cut those costs then in half. Um, and, I, and, I don't, and I didn't hear anything. So, so where we landed last time, it did not seem to be a responsible decision to, to allocate those monies toward, toward rebranding. Um, so so I'm, I'm still wanting to, to, to know what those actual um, costs, costs are. So the numbers still remain the same, the numbers that we presented before um, to rebrand, including everything that we presented for to redo our high school was the 1.8 million. But of that, our items, like um, uh, Superintendent Ortega stated, that it would be items like modernizing the kitchen. That's something we already have to do. But if we're looking at just key items, the numbers that we provided was for athletics. Um, it was for the gym floor, which again, we would have to do, but you do have to do the overlay. It was for the football field. Um, so the question remains is that I can provide, not the question, but the statement, I can provide any numbers and projections, but it'll be helpful if I can understand exactly what we will want to rebrand. And then I can provide those numbers and we could be talking factual numbers. And I think I, based on the conversation, I think I have a pretty uh, good grasp of the, the, the rebranding piece. Again, the overlay, <clears throat> the marquee, excuse me, the uniforms, uh, the paint. Those are the big, big ones, right? Uh, the four big ones. <clears throat> there are minor ones that we have to do. We cannot not do. And, um, and, and we can, we can uh, parcel that out so that we can say, this right here is strictly only rebranding. But this right here, as we are reimagining the high school, which does not equal rebranding, right? We're looking at the kitchen. We're looking at these other pieces that we think, hey, you know, this is going to be our one, our one high school. We should be investing in these particular things uh, as well. Can, can only because I'm not looking at those numbers right now. I, I know that they were stated. Can, if, if we were not looking at, it looks like the things that we need to do to reimagine the campus, those things need to happen anyway. If we're already giving direction to, to move to one um, campus. So we will need to reimagine some of those, some of those pieces. But in regards to the rebranding, I mean, the things that I feel like I heard, so correct, correct me if, if, if I'm leaving something off, if we say the, the, uh, the field, the gymnasium, uh, marquees, painting around the campus, different murals around campus, um, and I guess unif extracurricular uniforms and, and whatnot. So if we were to look at those things, those seem to me to be the athletic equipment. Those seem to be the things that that would be primary. And what would those costs be so that we can we can have a conversation not detached from the actual dollars. Yeah, so here on the on the screen, um, I put in uh, what we brought to our uh, September meeting. And so this kind of, hopefully this will kind of help us. So, so here, when I look at, when we look at $1.9 million, I'm gonna use a different word. This $1.9 million is to reimagine the high school, not rebrand the high school reimagine the high school, right? Because this includes modernizing the kitchen and upgrading the locker room. Those two things have nothing to do with quote unquote uh, rebranding. Also, if you see here, we can debate it. Should gym floor be rebranding or not rebranding? We think regardless of Azusa High School or a different name, this is a brand new, let's reimagine the high school. They need a new gym floor, right? So then when we think about it, it really leaves this first line item, which is the new branding. It leaves the turf overlay that has to be done. We cannot have that, right? And it leaves the, the athletic equipment. We can parcel this out more. Uh, based on the big four and just some of the the smaller things, we can parcel out parcel it out more and, and bring an updated. But 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 technically, and again, we we can argue about the gym floor if we wanted to. But we we think, regardless of name, we 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 would like to see the gym floor uh, redone uh, as well. 
So when we reimagine the high school, and that reimagination includes rebranding, then we're looking at about $1.9 million. So the gym was already going to be done. We hide, sure. we we yeah, sure. we would say yes, one thousand percent. And then since and if it, if the name is, stays the same, then it has an asterisk. If the name doesn't stay the same, then it has something else. But another, um, just to throw a curveball. So we just recently did the bleachers. So that would be a cost if we're because they're color coded. So if we're looking at the colors, then. If we want to redo the bleachers, then that would be another cost we need to add in. So it's just little things that can grow the number. But the key, I agree with Mr. Ortega, is just four items. But beyond that, it can continue to grow as you're looking at every portion of the campus. But if we identify the key four things, we provide those numbers and give those numbers support. So um, what what money from um, that we have from the different um, funding that we get? Um, can any of the LCAP money be used? Not at this time. We would have to re, um, write the LCAP to include that into a goal. But it can be doable? My rec professional recommendation would be no, but um, that's just Latasha's speak. Right, because we're investing in our community and the LCAP money is to reach out and, and invest in our community, correct? But for my... Um, in my professional opinion, your LCAP is primarily your supplemental concentration dollars, and it's to meet to improve the needs of the students. And I, for me personally, I would not say that that's improving the needs of the students. So where would the funding come um, to be able to go ahead and, um, for example, you know, the consideration of um, of making, it was just a, you know, conversation of having Foothill be an elementary, having to change all the, <clears throat> all of the, uh, toilets, uh, you know, doing all that. So, uh, or we rebrand. Where would, from what pocket would this be coming from? Our bond dollars. Everything would be coming from our bond. Mm -hmm. Is there any of the COVID money that we received that we could use? Um, we would have to be strategic, but COVID funds could be used for things such as ventilation. So um, it will be our HVAC. Um, so for most of the expenditures that would qualify, we have already allocated funds through our ESTER, which will be for our windows, our doors, our ventilation, our heating. Um, but COVID funds would not be appropriate to rebrand. Great, thank you. So where, where does the um, maintenance fund come in? That's not... So we do have our... that fund? Our yes, Mr. Landa. Oh, yes, you. thank you. We could <laughs> use fund 14. I'm sorry, um, I didn't hear the question. Can um, you please? The question was um, on the maintenance fund. They do have if we can use some of their own money. Yeah, so we currently transfer a million dollars this year. We only transfer six hundred thousand because we use four hundred thousand to upgrade our vehicles. Um, but yes, but we are currently using those funds. But every year, a million dollars is allocated, and so we could say the million dollars for the next year's budget could be set aside for school reorganization. Oh, okay. So, so you're saying for this year. For the school year, 2021, 2022, that they have already been used? No, I'm saying we transferred a million dollars in and 400,000 of that has been used. But we are currently using Fund 14 to modernize some of our campus. So we've been painting our campuses. We're currently upgrading some of our light fixtures and vice versa. And could, could those uh, $1 million be reallocated? Yes, ma'am, at any time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have a board member, Bo. I see your hand. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ortega, you alluded to um, some deficiencies at the Azusa High School Theater. You said something about it not being up to code and not being compliant. Can you give a little background on that? Um, I really can't give background, uh, but I could tell you that um, you, you have background, Natasha? I do not have background. I okay. just give an update. Okay. Well, I um, guess what, it is, what do you mean when you say that? So the background I have is I went to many um, theater shows, and and they always have to limit it how many people go in there because it's it's very small. I don't know, maybe twenty five seats. It, it seems real small. It's what what I what I could uh, add to to that? Yes, it's very very small. But there are things in that theater 
uh, that include electricity, lighting, uh, lighting um, that is not to code. And so if, if we were to say, well, that's what we want to be the theater, uh, again, that's fine, but we would have to go in there and make sure that, that it is completely up to code. Uh, right now, um, it, is, it is not up to code. And so right now we are currently uh, not using uh, that room because it is out of compliance. And um, in, in the reimagining of the Azusa High School campus, um, have you thought about either a total renovation and or an expansion of that theater? Or, or are you only contemplating using the Foothill Middle School Cafetorium as the theater space? That theater um, is actually part of a, a wing of classrooms. Uh, so that, yeah, so that, that was never, you know, meant to, to be a theater. It was just a, a classrooms that were converted to that. Um, so in, in order to use that space and to say, we're going to invest and make this a theater, which again, we can, but we're talking about a three, two to three row uh, theater. Very, 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 very small, unless you're going to swallow up uh, more, more classrooms. Or, of course, you can build from the ground up, but now obviously that's a that that's a big investment obviously we have a large property uh but that would be a a ginormous investment to build from the ground up and so that's why only that that's the only reason why I said we already have a a building a large building that already has some kind of fundamental um uh, build outs and so it really would just be renovating that and and converting that uh, but but all, you know, again, all of it is possibility, but that's why, that's why the mind went to, to the foothill, to the foothill campus. Thank you. Um, I know we're talking a lot about um, investment and we're talking about um, costs to upgrade or modernize or change spaces. Um, in our overall conversation around school and district reorganization, and now as we're um, refining possible models. Um, Mr. Ortega and Ms. Jamal, can you speak to the categories of cost savings that you have identified? Yeah, so some of the cost, cost savings, some of the, the more uh, obvious ones um, is gonna be uh, in personnel and staff. Uh, that would uh, run across um, all of the uh, different uh, bargaining units and associations, uh, starting with management and moving to certificated uh, and classified. Uh, so that that would be a, a bulk a bulk saving savings. Uh, then you have uh, things like um, your utilities. Uh, so those would be. Uh, cost savings uh, as well. Uh, we have recently um, parceled out our utilities. Uh, previous, uh, in the short, short past, um, those were not parceled out, and so we had one giant bill to pay our, pay our utilities, and so it was a little bit harder to decipher uh, usage, and so we we have been doing that. So, so that becomes your your next. Uh, set of savings, and then there's other set of savings that um, that can come across the the uh, world of a program uh, subscriptions, um, uh, by site uh, licenses, uh, things of that nature. Um, there, there's quite a bit of contracts that we have uh, that we would that we pay by uh, by site. That obviously would would render uh, some savings as well. And Latasha, oh, go ahead. Latasha, I'm not sure if there's anything else after them all. Uh, Mr. Tay and, and Mr. Jamal and Mr. Ronquillo as well. Um, for the benefit, of, it might be an easy question to say, well, if we have, if we're reorganizing our physical spaces, but we're serving the same number of students, 
um, what is the reduction, what's the rationale for a reduction in staff? Can you talk to that? I'll let Mr. Ronquillo pick up uh, some of the pieces. So I'll start off with, um, so for instance, um, there are some, some positions, some key positions that every school site has, right? Every, well, let's start with elementary, uh, just right there, right? So every elementary school has a principal. So if we went from nine schools to five schools, uh, then that means four principals that would be a reduction of four principals, right? Because even though the students are moving to another school, right? Um, unless we were considering having co-principals, then, then that's a reduction, right? Every school site uh, has a head custodian. Every school site has a secretary. Uh, every school site has these, these positions that are, are one, uh, librarian would be a, another one. Community liaison would be another one. And so those types of positions that are the, 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 the positions that a school has one of, um, those are the ones that um, would, be, would be the ones that, that for sure would be a, a reduction. But I think your question more maybe around like teachers or aides or uh, new aides or stuff like that. So I'll let Jorge uh, answer uh, that piece. Yes, thank you, Mr. Ortega, uh, and thank you, Dr. Bill, for the for the question. Uh, the as you start um, transitioning to campuses that are um, have greater capacity, you in effect um, can become more efficient with your staffing. So you start seeing um, less of a reduction or or more of a reduction in the number of combo classes, and you start maximizing the number of students that can be in a classroom for uh, specific grade bands, and that's. Uh, most true at the at the elementary level, and you start moving into the secondary levels, uh, you start being able to maximize the number of students in uh, the different content area classes. Um, so you'll, you'll start seeing uh, classes that may be currently sitting at a um, at a, a class size of about 14, 15 students to closer to 30 students, 35 students. Uh, and in some cases, 36 students, which is the contractual maximum. And I know when we were talking about models and it, as elementaries reach a certain student enrollment, enrollment threshold and middle schools and high schools as the same, there would be an additional, either an FTE or a 0.5 FTE of counselor or assistant principal. Can you just refresh our memory on some of those some of the thinking behind that as school sites um, serve an increased number of students on any one campus? I just want to make sure I understand the question. So if the, the question is, uh, we have presented at, uh, uh, I don't know, when we were looking at different models and the different configurations. And I had showed, shown that uh, once we get to a certain um, enrollment band or capacity, we would transition to um, like three assistant principals at the at the high schools. And I, don't, I could look up the, the number that we 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 identified, um, but it was uh, I think in the neighborhood of twelve hundred students was when we would transition to a uh, three assistant principal um, high school. Uh, and then I, I could look up the other the other um, uh, positions. Yeah, some of them on the top of my head were uh, definitely an increase in uh, custodial um, staff um, as we, again, start to invest in, in our facilities and the maintenance of our facilities. I think that was an increase. I think there was uh, also some, some, some bands increase on community liaison. And so I don't remember everything on the top of my head, but yes, there were some increases in investments in, in staffing to support the site. Yeah, board so member Rodriguez Pena. Mr. Rongio, that would be helpful if you can um, put that in the pocket or put it, um, because I know I do have that and you did give us that information and I don't know where it's at now, but yeah. just to, to remind us on, on what breakdown you did have. Okay, yeah, please. absolutely. I, I, I did. Great, it, it's really self-explanatory when you see the breakdown on that. It was, it was really good. Thank you. Thank you. 
I, I will I will um, put this in this next uh, this week's uh, board update. And then board president, if I may, I have a final question and a final comment for this round. Uh, yes, board member Bo. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ortega, can you um, re remind me um, at which campuses do we currently offer preschool programming? I know it's Longfellow and what are the other elementary campuses? I'm gonna answer in the reverse manner, board member Bo. Uh, the only two campuses where we do not have preschool are Hodge and Ellington. So all the other elementary schools except Hodge and Ellington offer preschool. That is correct. Okay. Um, so then my final comment, this goes back to um, the beginning part of the meeting and looking at the, the three models here. Um, at this time, I, I do not support the closure of Longfellow. I think that um, it is a, it's a unique space where they're doing very specialized work. And if anything, I think they have room to grow and expand their programs, um, especially to continue pursuing. Uh, I know uh, Ms. Lee was in the process of pursuing a CDE grant to fund uh, an all day, all year program. And I think that would be a major win for the families of our district to be able to bring a program like that there and to be able to do it in a specialized preschool campus, um, I think prov provides a very safe um, and comforting option to parents of the district. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Can, can the grants that have been written for um, preschool, can they be distributed to, to the other schools? Um, I believe so, but there is a process uh, that that you have to go through. It's not just on, like we can't just do that unilaterally. Uh, it's a it's in partnership in conjunction with the um, with the state uh, to make sure that 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 they they grant us that that ability. So to take a a current state preschool, let's say from from Dalton, and say, well, we're going to move it to over here. Um, uh, again, that is possible but it has to be with us in conjunction and partnership with the State Department of Education. Okay, so as I see that it is 8.30, there's no more hands raised. No more common. From the board. We have a, is it one, one meeting December 21st? Right. So one of the things that I would like to go ahead and ask, since we asked for um, more things to, uh, you know, to, to get some costs and so forth. Um, what does the timeline look like for us? We have been um, we have been doing pretty good in turning this around re relatively quickly. Uh, most of the requests you have gotten the same week, and so we're going to continue uh, to really push uh, to be able to do that in this Thursday uh, packet, and those that we can't, then the following. Great, thank you for that. As seeing that there's no more comments or questions from the board, we're gonna continue with the, our agenda and move to the next item in our agenda, which is 5.1. Can I please get a motion to adjourn this meeting tonight? Make a motion to adjourn 5.1. I'll go ahead and second, and let's go ahead and show by a, a hand vote or a voice vote. We have board member Cruz Gonzalez. Yes. Board member Greer. Yes. 
I'm sorry, Board Member Gurr, did you, we didn't hear you. Yes. I heard you then. Okay, we have Board Member Bo. Yes. Yes, Board Member, and I myself, yes, it is 5-0 and it is 8-35. This meeting has been adjourned. Thank you everyone at home for watching. And again, if you guys have comments or questions, make sure that you guys get here at the beginning of our meeting. You guys have three minutes to address the board with comments, concerns, or questions that you may have on items on our agenda. Have a great night and we'll see you guys at our next meeting. Good night.